Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Fruit Clips number 48. This of course is my award-winning weekly series where I expose the false prophets and the false teachers. And you know what? I'm unapologetic for doing exactly that. Now these are the false prophets that Jesus warned us about in Matthew 24. So we want to expose them in the hopes well, that maybe some of the followers would awaken and come away from them and back into the truth and sincerity of Jesus Christ, back into sound doctrine. Now these frauds say many outrageous things and many ridiculous things and quite frankly many blasphemous things and we're going to point this out throughout this video so if you are ready to go grab yourself some funyuns have a seat over there on the beanbag and let's get ready to do this video you ready all right let's do it here we go all right, so first up, we've got something, well, <laughs> kind of weird and disturbing. I came across this video. You can see the title. You can see the channel name, Seth Thomas McGee. Apparently, this young man is a prophet. And he made a video here. And I'm going to play you a clip, and then I'm going to comment. You ready? Roll it. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel and of America. Behold, you, O great America, will suffer a severe famine throughout all the land nationwide this year in 2024. Because you have not hearkened to my words through the prophet Seth Thomas McGee. Because you have not hearkened to my words through the prophet Seth Thomas McGee. All right, so yeah. In case you didn't hear Seth, you know, definitely feel free to play it again. Now, I have a question for you. How many of you have ever heard of Seth Thomas McGee? Okay, so that's uh, that's like no one. Uh, did you know that you, as Americans, that you're going to be punished this year with famine because you have not hearkened to his words? Because he's like a prophet and stuff. And so, wow. Anyway, friends, this is delusion. In fact, this is delusion on top of delusion on top of delusion. Look at him with his finger there. I, this is this is very creepy. But um, this is what the internet does. This is what internet prophets have done. And this is what they've bred: a new batch of false prophets rising up and terrorizing gullible listeners while trying to convince anyone listening that, well, God is their own personal weapon. And with that, I don't know what else I can add to old Seth's proclamation here, other than to publicly rebuke him and suggest that he repent of this ridiculous fantasy. Now, this is narcissistic doctrine. This is fantasy doctrine. It's not biblical. Uh, otherwise, I don't know what else to call this. Uh, in the meantime, America, if you're listening, we may experience some tough times this year, right? We may have some really hard times. Uh, but one thing I can tell you for sure is that we're not going to be judged because we failed to hearken to the words of Seth Thomas McGee here. Good grief. I don't even know what to say. But this is what's out there. This is what's happening. Let's move on to the next segment. All right, so next up, we've got, no, it's not Elvis Costello. Uh, it's a speaker named Keith Ferrante. Now, this is an old clip that I'm going to play you, and it was suggested to me. But it's bad enough that it certainly deserves to be documented on Friday Fruit Clips. And, oh boy, did I mention it was bad. Now, I'm about to roll the first clip. And I implore you to watch it. Please watch it. It's 90 seconds long, but please watch it because as annoying as it is, um, it's become a, at least a little worth watching so you can truly understand how delusional it is out there and how it's been for a long time now, actually. There are people who actually think that people like Keith Ferrante are real that his little performance here is real, that this is of God. I'm not kidding. So 
Think of this as an endurance test. This is gonna be about 90 seconds long. You've been warned, here we go. Well, congratulations, you made it through that first clip, and of yes, this is some of the most ridiculous antics that any false teacher, false prophet could demonstrate. This is, again, wow. Uh, now, believe it or not, this goes on for about 15 minutes, at least. I had to actually stop watching after that. I couldn't take any more. Now, while most of the parishioners present there, they're giggling and they're chuckling, uh, they more than likely think that this is real and of God. Yes, they do. But let me tell you something, folks. It's not. It's not of God. And do you know why? Because it's childish. It's performance. Old Keith here. Well, he wants you to believe that, well, the Holy Spirit is just taken over. And he's what? Drunk in the spirit. He's not in control. He's experiencing supernatural silliness. Because, yeah, that's what God loves to do here in this generation, right? Just make everything look foolish, drunk, unhinged, and stupid. And some of you might get mad at me for saying that, but this is true. Let me show you a verse. Well, look in Galatians chapter 5, if we scroll down to, let's go to verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Let me show you one more. Actually, what I did was a search in the King James Bible on sober-minded, and all kinds of verses come up. But you might want to look in First Peter. Look what uh, Peter says. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Look at Peter. Uh, we've all read this one. First Peter five eight. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And again, so many verses, uh, including. Titus 1.8, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, and so many more, right? Nowhere in Scripture does it tell us to walk around and scream incoherently, babbling and acting like a crazy person. All right, so we're going to wrap this segment up with Keith Ferrante. And again, just wanting to document this, that this is the type of delusion that goes on out there in churches. And I guess that's what we get when we allow Jerry Lewis into the pulpit so he can walk around singing Michael Jackson, I'm going to say 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 I
it's just so insulting to what Jesus did at Calvary. It's so insulting to true salvation. They're just mocking God. So with that, let's move on to our next segment. All right, so next up we've got, oh, look, it's three heretics slash three false prophets. And oh boy, they're all on a panel here today. What are they talking about? Look at the title. It says three prophets explain three American solar eclipses, right? They're talking about the April 8th eclipse that's coming up here. So over here, you've got notorious false prophet Amanda Grace. Amanda Grace, everyone knows Amanda. She's the queen of the all caps. God, God insists that you put that last pot in all caps. Otherwise, you might not know how important his works are. Oh, she likes the all caps. It's the band of Grace, so. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm sorry. In the center, ding, 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 you've got Steve Chocolante. It's Chocolante. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Chocolante. I'm going to make you an offer I can't refuse. And, of course, rounding this whole thing off is the band child. Uh, what's his name? Brandon Biggs. Uh, you know, some of you might feel that I'm being mean, but this guy is a confirmed dastardly false prophet. He's got the brain capacity of a seven-year-old. And I would equate this guy as to a child sitting on his grandpa's lap telling stories. That's what he does. It's so hard to listen to him because he absolutely, he doesn't just butcher the Bible. He butchers the salvation, right? He has turned salvation into fun time on the internet. Let's tell as many stories as I can. And so we're going to listen to him first. And when you watch this guy, watch his mannerisms. He's making it up as he goes. So. We're going to listen to him first. He's so utterly annoying, but watch uh, as he basically says in his alleged prophecy, well, he just says everything. Everything's going to happen, according to Brandon. Roll that first clip. What the Lord has showed me about this eclipse is that um, he said, basically when I was praying a couple weeks ago, he said to me, he said, Brandon, I want you to watch Passover. For when Passover comes, there's going to be an acceleration of things even more so from what it was from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. He said, but this will be a time of great acceleration. And he said, you'll see acceleration in the, in the financial realm. And he said, you're going to see uh, acceleration in the politics. And you're going to see acceleration in war. And he told me, he said, these things are going to, it's, it's like, it's, it's, he, said, oh, for, he said, for my son's return is imminent. And he told me this. He said, it would, the, the, at, when this happened, when Passover, this time of Passover happened, there would be such a great, is almost, oh, and, and, and he told me about the weather. And he told me, he said, there'll be great um, um, temperature rising in um, Chicago, through New York, and um, some of the other areas up east. And he said, there'll be record-breaking temperatures during this time frame. And he warned me about um, um, storms, long track tornadoes, and for the body of Christ to um, take their authority over these storms because there would be long, these tornadoes, they'll be the largest tornadoes we've ever seen in history, potentially, be, being long track tornadoes. And then um, he said, microburst. He was talking about 150 mile an hour per hour. 150 mile per hour winds would come out of these microbursts. And he was talking about taking authority over that and praying over that. But I just saw a great acceleration of mm -hmm. things from even from Passover to Ro Rosh Hashanah going into um, the fall. You know, I do understand that some people may think that I'm rude. And that's fine. I'm willing to accept that. But I have to tell you, I simply cannot tolerate or at least think that I can sit idly by while absolute degenerates like this hijack the gospel of Jesus Christ and shipwreck the faith of hundreds of thousands of people. This man toys with his own life. Every time he opens his mouth, to speak things on behalf of God that God has not spoken. 
He has over 100,000 people subscribed to him on YouTube who think that he's real. They think he's of God. They don't care. Again, he's like a seven-year-old, and he's given a platform because this generation so desperately prefers to get their itching ears tickled instead of abiding in sound doctrine. But he's going to say a couple of more things here. Listen to what he prophesies about Donald Trump. Roll it. And I saw Trump rising up, and then I saw an attempt on his life. Uh, that w the, this bullet flew by his ear, and it came so close to his head that it busted his drum eardrum. And I saw um, he was he fell to his knees during this time frame, and he started worshiping the Lord. He got radically born again during this time frame. I'm talking. People say he's saved now, but he becomes really on fire for Jesus for what I saw coming. And um, then I saw people interceding when he and I see him. I saw him winning the the presidency uh, through great. Uh, the Lord showed me it would go clear into the the summer. Great persecution would come on him through the judges and through the um, through the law and all these people trying to sue him and all this stuff. But there would be a stop to it, and their things would start to, to, to break free, come toward the fall. And then I saw him winning uh, the election uh, through uh, the patriots coming out and voting. And then, and, then, and then there will be a great economy crash. So again, there it is. He basically prophesied everything. And it's all going to start with the eclipse. So please remember everything that this guy says if you care at all whether he's legit or not. Now, we know here at Drew Bloom 34 Ministries that this guy is an absolute fraud, and he is in big trouble for Judgment Day. So with that, we will conclude with this guy. We're going to move on to Steve. I won't try to say his last name, and we're going to listen to a clip from him. Go ahead, Steve. Mm -hmm. Let's come back to the solar eclipse. I think that if it goes across, by the way, it goes across more than seven. Mm -hmm. It goes across 11. I've counted 11 Ninevehs mm -hmm. under the path of totality. So that means 89% to 100% darkness through the blocking out of the sun. And mm -hmm. Jesus mentions that, right? He says that in the last days, you're going to have to look up. Mm -hmm. Look up. Don't look down. Look up. And there'll be great signs and wonders in the heavens and people's hearts will fail them for fear. The sun will be dark and the moon will be turned to blood. So mm -hmm. what, what does it mean? So we've got, first of all, we had seven Salems that were crossed by the 2017 mm -hmm. solar eclipse. That was the witch hunt mm -hmm. that you're talking about. That Trump really had to go through the meat grinder to realize that's probably what a lot of Americans go through. Just the, the injustice, the meat grinder of the, the court system that all right, so just in case you didn't understand what old Steve Chocolate Latte said here, there was an eclipse back in 2017 that apparently uh, crossed over several Salem, several towns by the name of Salem. Hence, the connection is Jerusalem. Get it? And he equated that to the Salem witch trials and sure enough applied this to what Donald Trump went through, again, having gone through, as it were, a witch trial, right? A witch hunt. Yes, you actually heard this guy. This is how obsessed they all are with Donald Trump, that even signs in the heavens are being applied to Donald Trump. I kid you not. Wow, 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 wow. Check that out. Anyway. Uh, we're going to now listen to what Prophetess Amanda Grace said, and I'm sure everything she says will be all caps. What do you say, Amanda? So, you know, all of these things aligning are by no mistake, and there are no coincidences with God. This is the Lord speaking. Mm -hmm. Do you see an earthquake happening? Do you think one will? I believe when there are signs in the heavens, many times you see shakings on the earth. You do. They just seem to follow in tandem of each other. And so we are seeing siftings happening on the earth. I call, to call them siftings in the United States of America right now. We see these siftings happening in the church. We see siftings happening in the political arena. Well, part of sifting is shaking, mm -hmm. you know? So we're beginning to see that happen, and it would not surprise me one bit if after this eclipse there was a major shaking in the earth. All right, so there you go. The man boy, Brandon Biggs. He asks Amanda, do you think there'll be an earthquake? 
right? Now that's very telling, of course, in and of itself. Why is Brandon asking Amanda that question? Didn't God tell Brandon that there would be an earthquake? Hello? You see what I'm saying here? Uh, but Amanda completely avoids giving a solid answer and only gives enough to keep her place at the table. Amanda says that, well, there's going to be siftings, going to be some siftings. What does that mean? Well, we don't know. It's very vague. It could mean anything. But it sounds good. Sifty, the siftings have started. All caps. that to be in all caps. So Amanda does not prophesy here. She gives the illusion that she's prophesying, but she's not. She's playing it very, very safe. And do you know why she's not prophesying? Because she's not a prophet. She's a fraud. None of them are prophets. So in essence, what you have here is just a social media prophet gathering, right? And many of the fans gathered to watch and they, you know, they were all entertained. They love this kind of stuff. Get all their favorite rock stars together so that they can get their dopamine releases. But none of this is of God. This is speculation at best. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with speculation. We all speculate. But when you're saying, thus saith the Lord, that's when it becomes blasphemy. Because in essence, what they're doing, for people that do care, when none of what Brandon and these others have said happens at the eclipse, well, people's faith is going to shipwreck. They're going to walk away from God because they thought for a moment in fear with this eclipse coming that, well, this could be the end. This could be the end. It could be it. And so they prepare and then nothing happens. And what then happens to their faith? Well, it shipwrecks and they walk away from God. They walk away from Jesus because of what this clown and these clowns have said. This is why prop, uh, false prophecy is so dastardly. It's just unreal. So we're going to leave these three right here and certainly mark and avoid them because they are confirmed false prophets. So we are going to move on to our final segment. Now, before we get to our final segment, I do want to share some scripture. Second Peter chapter 2. Oh my goodness, these are such powerful verses if you want to know what's happening. Look what Peter says. Verse 1, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Watch this. And through covetousness shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Wow, that is just right on. How awesome is the word of God. All right, so rounding off our Friday fruit clips tonight is, there she is, Dr. Sharon Stone, a confirmed false prophet and all-around blasphemer. We're going to be playing some clips from this video right here. It's from about 10 months ago. 10 months ago. You can see the title, Receiving Prophetic Revelation for Wealth. Why not? Sounds very biblical, right? Absolutely not. Uh, so she's going to share with you some revelation so that you can become wealthy. Now, do you think she's doing this for free? <laughs> Well, of course not. After a short Google search, you can see right here, back then you would have paid about 99 euros, which is over $100. These wealth revelations from the doctor are not free. You're gonna have to pay for them, folks. So with that, we're gonna listen to some clips. We're gonna play the first one and we'll comment as we go. Roll the first one. And the world is full of fortune seekers who pursue get rich quick schemes. And you know, they're hoping to find the magic that can financially transform their lives. And I have seen that with so many, uh, particularly this young generation, they're wanting someone to tell them how to become a millionaire immediately, how, how, how 
uh, to to have the, the great wealth. God doesn't promise everybody the same things, but you know that God wants you highly blessed financially, highly blessed, more than you can think, dream, or ask. But you cannot be a fortune seeker and pursue get-rich-quick schemes and expect to have that type of opportunity, that divine opportunity opened in your life. And, you know, for centuries, many have sought psychics, spiritualists, uh, cults, simply to gain the spiritual edge for their success or increasing wealth. Right. Irony, right? So, Dr. Sharon, well, she's warning her listeners about get-rich-quick schemes, and she's doing that while literally orchestrating and implementing a get-rich-quick scheme. It's unbelievable. So she warns her listeners about psychics, but in essence, she's luring in those who may have sought psychics in the past by saying, hey, you guys, give your money to me instead, and I'm going to show you how to get wealthy. So Sharon is merely seducing the people who used to throw their money away on other stuff, well, come on over and throw your money away on me and my God stuff. She's going to put God into the mix so that it'll make the people feel better, right? But that's where it becomes destructive for Dr. Sharon. She's using God in her own personal get-rich-quick scheme. And I can tell you, doctor, if you're listening, this is going to have the worst possible outcome for you, lest ye repent. So Dr. Sharon is building it up. She's setting it all up and she's not done. What's next, Dr. Sharon? Where can I find these treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places? Uh, think about it. <laughs> this is very important. This is the, the couple things I, I wanted to share with you that God really changed my life with it. Think about it. The treasure of darkness are stored in, of all places, darkness. Wow, what a revelation. Look at this. And the wealth of secret places are hidden, and of all locations, secret places. So that means that these treasures surround us. And the good news is, is God is not trying to hide treasure from us. He's hiding them for us. Well, oh my gosh, this is getting so exciting. It sounds so good. There's treasures in dark and secret places. They're all around you. But how can I find them? Well, you got to pay Dr. Sharon 99 euros to get the treasure map so you can find the hidden treasures. The Bible says that God foreknew you long before your birth even from the foundation of the earth. And that means the Lord wants to reveal himself and reward you as you follow his divine plan. Now, I'm going to give you a lot of secrets in this next five weeks, but this is a, this is a foundational one. Now, you and I cannot even imagine how blessed we are. There's so many secrets that it's going to take Dr. Sharon five weeks to get them all to you. That's a lot of secrets. Yes, sir. Five weeks of top secret secrets that Sharon will unleash upon you. And it's such a blessing that God gave these secrets to Sharon so that she could sell them to you for 99 euros. But as he wants to reward you so that others will see how he blesses you, that he can then reveal himself to them as well as the true and living God. God blessing you financially is revealing him as the one true God. You know, folks, there is so much error here. This woman is in deep error, deep blasphemy. There's so much harm being done. It's actually shocking. Sharon tells the listener that the one true God will reveal himself to others only when they see how wealthy and blessed you are. In essence, this is what she said. Never mind 
God revealing himself to others through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. It's the wealth revelation blessings. Oh, this is all just so bad. Try to imagine being at this level of evil, degrading Jesus Christ and the cross to presenting another material gospel where you're going to win people to God through wealth. Oh, I have no words. I'm at a loss. And quite frankly, that's about all I can bear of this woman, the level of evil. Dr. Sharon Stone, if you're listening, lady, repent, repent. It's not worth eternity for this. My goodness. And if you're a follower, please come away from this woman. Mark her and avoid her at all costs. She is exactly who Jesus warned you about. In Matthew chapter 6, we can scroll down. Let's start in verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. People like Sharon Stone will take you off of this and put you onto a path after material wealth. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with making money, making a living, you know, even trying to get some extra cash flow or whatever. But the way that these wolves present it to you, that they're going to reveal to you secrets from God, as long as you pay them for this, this is so corrupt. Chase Jesus. He is our treasure. All right, folks. Well, that's going to do it for this 48th episode of Friday Fruit Clips. I want to personally thank you for tuning in, spending time with me here. It always seems to go by so fast. And, you know, as always, please remember, if you would, to pray for all of these lost followers, these false prophets, pray that God would absolutely awaken them strongly and bring them back to the truth of Jesus Christ. Also pray for the false prophets as well, that God would bring them to repentance and that they would stop deceiving God's children. And so also, if you want to help this ministry, you can. Remember, my channel is not monetized, so I appreciate anyone who would want to partner with this ministry or just help us out financially. Just go right down into the description and you can do so today, and I really, really thank you. All right, well, looks like we are ready to shut this down. My staff is bundled up and they're at the door. I want to get home. And so they're telling me that the credits are loaded and ready to roll. So let's hit the lights, um, set the alarm, and we are ready. All right, friends, until next week, remember, stay fruity. All right, let's get up and get on out of here.
of the men and women of God to the lips and tongues of the prophets and the apostles utter my voice in your tongues saith the Lord speak that that I give you speak it prophesy 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 